Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sport and Sports Report, this edition. Sam been with us. Uh, he's unable to be here, but we do have Brent Duncan, who is Athletic Director at CHS. And welcome, Brent. Glad to be here. Hopefully, we'll get Sam back next week. <laughs> I'll try Hopefully to get us a guest. Right. right. Hope it's nothing serious. Uh, what's coming up? Well, Friday night, the only thing we have left right now for fall sports is uh, mm -hmm. we have the football sectional, which we're hosting right. against Muncie Central starting right. at 7. So that's what we'll be getting ready for this week. And then shortly thereafter, we'll be at the opening of a scrimmage for girls basketball. So that's on October 30th. Right around the corner. Two weeks from last Saturday. It's hard to believe that we're already talking winter. And actually, right. girls practice start today. And Co-ed swim practice starts, well, girls' swim practice actually starts next Monday, and the boys will start a week, couple weeks after that, so. Days go by quickly. I think as we get older, <laughs> it seems they go by a lot faster. We have an awards program coming up uh, for fall. When will that be? Uh, I think each team right now is doing their own thing, so we're not having a big one right now. So we, we didn't do that last year, and still with the, you know, not that we can't have them, but. The coaches wanted to try to do one on their own, so we're going to try that and see how that works. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't go as well as we hope it will, we'll, we'll, we'll think about something for the winter time. The awards program, uh, are they selected? The winners are selected by the players? Yeah, if you're talking about the MVP and the mental attitude, yeah, mm -hmm. the players vote uh, on who's the, who they think is the, the most valuable and the best mental attitude of the kids that are on the team. So It's quite an honor. Yeah, I think if kids will take time and look at it and see who's really the person or person that makes them tick or sure. whatever and not just make it a popularity contest and or because I'm the best. You know, sometimes I always think, like, I'll just take football, for instance. We have a back or a quarterback that has a great season, but is it because they're just a good athlete or because the linemen made it possible mm -hmm. for them to mm -hmm. have that good season? Sure. So sometimes I wonder if the linemen aren't sometimes are better are most valuable just because they open holes, but you know, it's, it's a hard call. Yes. Or maybe it's the guy who doesn't score points in basketball and just plays defense or whatever it is. So I think if you really sit back and look and the kids really analyze who's the most important to the team at how good could we be without them on it, then that kind of lets you know who, who probably should be or shouldn't be. How's the academics uh, run into that, play into that? Well, I don't know if the academics play into that. Kids voting on that anymore. Okay. You know, but, you know, we give out a scholar athlete award that if they have a 3.7 GPA for the whole school year or higher, then they'll get an award for that as well. So the coach, the coaches select the most improved player in, in that category and so on? Uh, we don't have one. If they want one, they can do one of them on their own when they have their banquets. And I think, you know, for people when they have their own meeting, it's a lot more personal because it's more geared towards the kids on the team. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we do the MVPs and the BMAs, I think they're great. It's just... I'm not so sure everybody wants to know who the MVP of the cross country team is if they got a football player or the or the tennis team doesn't want to know who the MVP of the volleyball team is <laughs> or vice versa. So um, it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks when you talk to people whether they like them or not. So we'll we'll give it a shot. And last year we didn't have them at all because of the pandemic and sure. they thought they liked that. So we're going to give it a whirl and see what it looks like. But you know, once the coaches get all the MVPs and the BMAs, I have all those plaques in my office. We like to get a picture of those kids so we can get them put out and put on our website so that people know who they were. Sure. Is there a criteria as far as a blanket awards? And yeah, and actually I haven't had anybody come and ask me about one for so far. But uh, They got to have so many varsity letters and then they got to have so many varsity points. And you get a point for each part season. So if you get a varsity letter, you get two points. If you get a JV or a freshman letter, Awards, you get one point. Then you got to accumulate six letters at least to get the uh, clock, mm -hmm. or, and then our, our, I say the blanket, I should say, and then so many points, and then you got to get more letters to get the clock, and then more points. So, if they got questions, they can come in and see me, and then they get points for their academic side of that as well. And we'll be happy to sit down with them once we fill the paperwork out and make sure they've uh, qualified. <laughs> we had some runners in the cross country section. How did they do? Yeah, we had three went to the regional yesterday, uh, last Saturday at Rushville, and Owen Baker and Austin Winta and Abigail Strewing. Unfortunately, Abigail has the injury and wasn't able to run Saturday, so um, neither one of the boys advanced. Owen missed uh, advancing by three seconds to the semi-state. He mm -hmm. finished as the 11th individual qualifier that's not on one of the five teams that advanced, and they only take the top 10, so he was just one spot shy of being where he needed to be, and, you know, you know. He's coming back next year as a senior, and hopefully he'll put the time in and the work. And sure. you know Austin's going to graduate, but uh, miss him as well. And Abby's just uh, 
just a sophomore, so hopefully she'll get over her injuries and have a good year next year. Well, we're looking forward to it, and I know it's uh, always a sad thing happens when the seasons end. And yeah, I talked to kids before, you know, and you hear them talk about not coming back, and it's like you know we're all going to miss them. Then we hope the younger the younger people have learned something from them and take that and take it to the next level and right. work hard in the off season to make it a better year for them the next year. So. Uh, I know the season just ends, so it'll take some time off, and it won't be long before limited contact time starts back up, and hopefully they take some heart and hold each other accountable to get each other into the gym and make them better as individuals but also as a team. Well, it takes a lot of work to be an athlete. Uh, you sacrifice a lot. But I think, if, you know, as I tell kids, you got 24 hours in a day. If you sleep for eight, that's 16 hours. You get a lot of things accomplished. <laughs> you still have time to be a kid in those 16 hours, but... You know, it's going to take anywhere from six to eight hours a week, mm -hmm. seriously, if you're going to work on your sports and be in the weight room and do all the things you need to get done. So, You're going to have to keep up your studies. Yeah, and that's the positive part. I think most of our athletes are really good students. Uh, yes. You know, typically the, we'll have well over half of them carry a 3.5 or higher, or, or at least a 3.0 or higher. Many of them carry a 3.5 or higher. So it's very seldom do we have them that are floating under the 3.0 mark, which is a B average. And... Not that there's anything wrong with that, so it's pretty good. We don't typically have too many kids that become academically ineligible but based on the IHSA rules. So. Well, I think it bodes well for CHS, so the teaching is there. But I think if the kids come and do what they, you know, they're there for, which is to be a student first. We haven't put sure. out too many professional athletes in the time that I've been here in 30 years. And, but we've put out a lot of good kids that have a lot of good jobs that can take care of themselves as the year goes along. And, we have a great staff that work with the kids. If the kids will just come and do what they're supposed to and work hard, and the teachers will work with them really well. As we talked about, the sectional is coming up right around the corner. In fact, it's coming up this Friday night is the opening of the sectional. To win a sectional, you have to win three ball games. Yeah, depending on the sectional, most of them are eight-team sectionals. So for us, uh, you know, if we win this Friday night, then we'll play again on the next Friday night, and then you'll have one more week. And so yes, so everything's geared off. Uh, I just say his calendar's geared off of football, so they always start with the, the state finals at turkey time and work their way backwards. So, But for us, we have eight teams in our sectional, so it'll be a three-week sectional. And uh, tickets are? Tickets are $6 a piece. They'll be at the door. I'll, obviously, since an IHSA event, your all-sport ticket does not get you in. So right. uh, come watch the, the kids play on Friday night. You know, Last year, we went up there and beat Muncie Central up there. I'm sure they're coming back to our place with like a little bit of revenge. And, <laughs> It'd be good for us to get a second, you know, first round win in a row, yes, which I'm not sure, yes. so sure it's been a long time since that's even happened. So <laughs> that would be great. And the weather forecast, it looks like it'll be cool, but uh, not a stormy night, which will be good. Yeah, it's been, knock on wood, it's been yes. a pretty good fall for football on Friday. You know, for the last two or three years, it's not always been a great Friday night. <laughs> and sometimes they come at the wrong time. So, you know, the kids have worked hard and they're they're putting their time in this week as well. And Hopefully they're preparing in the right way to get us a win. and uh, It'd just be nice to have a full stand. You know, we always have a decent crowd at our home games, and mm -hmm. then we get to the tournament time, like nobody wants to come out and support them. <laughs> I don't know, because you can't use your all-sport tickets or you got to pay the $6. But, you know, I think I looked back last year at Newcastle game, and we sold 300-some tickets total. And the year before, we sold 400-some. And, you know, we sell sure. more than that on a normal game night. Yes. Just coming to our place <laughs> for, to watch them for the regular season. So I'm, I'm not always sure why they don't want to come out and support them on the, on the sectional on the tournament time. So mm -hmm. hopefully it'll be a big crowd on Friday night. Hopefully we will, and we'll we'll soon see. Uh, here are the season records for area football teams. The sectionals begin on Friday. Centerville is eight and zero. They won over Nice Town in their final ball game, 46 to nothing, and they opened sectional play at Eastern Hancock. Cambridge City is 0-5. They lost 54 to nothing to South Decatur. They're home to Nicetown on Friday. It will be Union County, a 4-4. They lost 41-7 at Tri. They opened their sectional at Paoli on Friday. Richmond is 1-8. They lost to Harrison of West Lafayette. 42-22, they're at Shelbyville on Friday. They played during the season, those two teams. Shelbyville won. 22 to 16. Rushville is 0 and 9. They lost 67 to 7 to Greensburg at Batesville on Friday for their sectional play. Franklin County is 6 and 3. They won over Beach Grove 26 to 28. 
He'll be at Lawrenceburg Friday. The Spartans 1 and 8, lost to Batesville 40 to 13. Home with Muncie on Friday. Muncie Central is 1 and 8. The Bearcats' one win was over Richmond 16 to 8 during the season. The Spartans' one win was over Rushville 55 to 33. The Spartans' offensive average 7.9. Defensive average is 53.4. Muncie's average is 12.5 points a game on offense and give up an average of 40.9 on defense. The Spartans and Bearcats met last season's sectional opener. It was a Spartan win, 54 to 21. The Spartans lost their second sectional game to Newcastle, 31 to seven. So it'd be great to advance on Friday night to the next week. Yeah, it'd be great. I mean. Kids had a chance, you know, we had a chance to play them last year and come out with a win. If you was that game last year, it was freezing cold and yes. sideways wind and rain, and it was just a miserable night. So yeah. let's hope that it's not the same type of night this Friday right. night. But if the cards fall right and we win, and then next week um, Shelbyville can beat Richmond, we'll be back home then the Saturday after that as well. Then neither one of us will have the opportunity to host the final unless <laughs> the cards are way wrong on the other side. But sure. I don't think that's going to happen. So... Uh, well, let's, let's hope for a good night, and let's just hope for a great turnout with all of our kids to well, have a crowd. Well, the Spartans pretty well even, it seems, as far as the season is concerned. Yeah, I know we lost to Richmond early, and it was a closer ball game than the score sure. ended up being. And, you know, those other two opener. teams have won those games, and I think, with, you know, with time we've gotten a little bit better and moved the ball. And the only thing that kind of hurt us against Richmond was they got outside us a couple of times, and we just didn't have the foot speed to to keep up with their players once they got around us. So yes. hopefully we you know, we get an opportunity to play them again or Shelbyville as long as we hopefully can contain their speed if they have it, you know, we're a little bit better off. So unfortunately we're not blessed with a lot of foot speed top to bottom. So <laughs> we'll see. But you, you don't have any control over the sectional, do you, as far as running it? Uh, it's I should say A all the way. They, as they far, set the rules and regulations. Yeah, they set the rule, they set the draw. You know, it'll be just like a regular home season game other than you know, if the band wants to be out there or whatever, we'll do all the same things we typically do. We probably won't throw our T-shirts out. We won't announce our corporate sponsors sure. just because it's an IHSA mm -hmm. event and not our own personal one. But um, other than that, it'll look like just a normal game. The band, I think, will be there. Well, that's They're good. supposed to let me know by tomorrow. And yes. I thought Mr. Thompson said they would like to be there. And uh, if Sandy wants the Spartanettes to dance at halftime, they can do that as well. So good. I thought perhaps they put restrictions on like they do in the state finals where they ban any kind of celebrations or something? I yeah, I mean, it's they they trying to let us hold it like the regular season. Oh, oh you can't bring your signs. You can't bring all mm -hmm. those good things to put in the stands. And I went and watched my niece play in the volleyball sectional finals at Ron Colley, and the little sister wanted to take her big Spartan fathead type thing of her <laughs> sister, and you can't do that because you can't <laughs> be of those in the stands. So I had to tell them, no, that was a no-no. So... I said, they go, why? I said, well, you can't put your posters up because you can't block the view of other people in your uh -huh. stand. So uh, they didn't think about that. Or somebody last week wanted to know if they could bring a live horse to the <laughs> to the homecoming because it's part of the theme, and there's a rule about live animals at uh, <laughs> athletic events at the IHSA. So they're not permitted. And so I always like to tell those people who bring their dogs in the springtime, you're really not supposed to have your dogs there because <laughs> the IHSA says no live animals allowed during <laughs> IHSA events. So. Sure. And the event we host is an IHSA event, so you're really not supposed to have your animals there. So uh, we haven't asked them to take them home yet, but maybe we should. So I know you're not a member of the IHSA board of directors right now, but do you have any news from them as far as uh, something in the future may happen that we should be watching? No, for? no, I got a text from some of my buddies today about five classes in sports, so I don't know. There must be something on the cooker back there. So, you know, right now we have four in every sport. Well, most every sport. Uh, right. Soccer just has three, um, and football has six. So you got the question asked of me today, are we in favor of five classes or are we not in favor of five classes? So there must be something cooking, but I haven't seen anything on it yet. So but I know there was the been a little... to go to five? I don't know about the advantage. I think their biggest push is that they would have less separation from the top of the class to the bottom of the class. So mm -hmm. I think I mentioned on here before, like, Single A would be anyone from one to 500 students, and 2A would be the class schools that are 500 to 1,000, and 3A would be 1,000 to 1,500. I see. 4A would go up to 2,000. Anything above 2,000 would be 5A. Mm -hmm. So be less separation in the classes from the top to the bottom. You know, like for us, we're in 4A in, in basketball, whatever, 
right now we have 983 kids in school and Carmel's got 5,000, almost 6,000. So yes. there's a big discrepancy be the number of students, you know, in their school compared to what's in our school. So that it would just have a less separation from the top to the bottom of each class. There are six classes in football, as you mentioned. Uh, in class six, uh, what's the ratio of students there? Well, uh, Carmel's always the odd one out. Yes. That's the, it's just the top 32 biggest schools in the state. So they're probably all over 2,500 to 3,000 in that area. So. Okay. Without looking, that's that would be my guess. So, mm -hmm. unless there's success, uh, Cathedral's in the top class, and they're not that big, but they've had that much success in football, and so they're probably truly a 4A school playing at 6A level. So, um, there's there's always those anomalies out there. When you were on the board, did that go into effect, or how long has 6A been? No, it's been around for a long time. So. I don't know exactly when it came in, but mm -hmm. it's been there for a while. But there's been some talk about changing it. Right now, there's been some talk about the top 32 stay at six, and then the lowest 32 are one, and everybody else is in kind of shuffled around in the middle a little mm -hmm. bit. So 5A is kind of their catch-all category right now. So <laughs> that's where they put the people that have, they have extra. So they try to balance out the 2A. Right now, they do the 6A and the 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A are all evenly split, and then 5A gets the gets the catch-all. So I don't know what would happen if they changed the top to the top 32 and the bottom to the lowest 32, then what, I assume 5A would still be the catch-all again. I don't know. So, uh, Is that good in your opinion? Is it good? I personally am not a big fan of class. However, I get it in football because size does make a lot more difference yes. in speed and the number of people you have. It. Uh, I wasn't a fan of class basketball or class softball <laughs> or class baseball or whatever, but I don't think I'll ever go back. That's it'd be harder to t take it back than it was to get it to end the first time. So I don't see it ever returning to a single class sport of any type. And there's been some talk just in casual conversations of why aren't all the individual sports in class as well? Golf, tennis, uh -huh. cross country, track, swimming. So those are, there aren't classes there. That's just one big conglomerate of people. So if we're going to class the team sports, why aren't we classing the individual sports? I know there's been a little bit of talk about that, but it's not seemed to got a whole lot of traction yet. Is there any Class A sports in high school anymore, or is everyone, or any not class, I should say, uh, or uh, are they all class now? And around the state, around mm -hmm. the country? Uh, I don't know where Kentucky kind of lies yet on class. Uh, for a long time it was us in Kentucky and maybe one other that had kind of held out, so. Kentucky has a different tournament style look at the end and the number of people that are invited, but I don't know if they're all class now or not. So I know we were one of the last few to get to that. Yes. So Class A is a result of principal action. Is that where it came from? Yeah, all the rules in the IHSA are presented through and went through the principals association that's presented to the board. Mm -hmm. So even though everybody thinks there's seven people sitting in Indianapolis making all the rules. They're just there to enforce the rules that are made by their principals that are brought to their attention and voted on by the members of the board, which there are 19 of those. So mm -hmm. anybody who wants to make a rule change proposal, I'll just get your principal with the other and write a rule and send it in and they'll vote it in or vote it out. So, or tweak it. So. Things changed with class basketball especially, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I don't know if it created better rivalries, worse rivalries. It, Definitely put a lot more pressure on schools that are at the bottom that now are in their class and should mm -hmm. should be winning. Um, it's made it a little more difficult on the travel when you get to the regional, just because it's not quite as centrally or localized as it used to be. And you know, for example, for us last year in boys basketball, we traveled to Washington, Indiana. Yes. Uh, there's been a little talk about changing the regional to a a one game format, like the semi-state right now is a one game format. So there's been some talk about changing the regional to a one game format, which would keep more people involved for another week and then make the semi-state a little two game format instead of the current one game format. But whether that'll pass, I don't know. I know that's the commissioner's wish and hope. And so we'll see what happens with that as it moves down the line a little bit. Attendance was affected with class A, wasn't it? But I, I can't say what it was prior to because I didn't ever really pay attention, but mm -hmm. uh, I think in a big scheme of things, probably yes, because I, you know I think back to when I was in high school and we had about 800 kids in the high school I went to, and you know, if you won the sectional, then that was a big deal. Uh, yeah. Marion, Marion was in our sectional, so it was always nice to, to knock the Giants off if you could get there. And uh, 
So I don't know if it brought more people to the games because you thought that thought of the small school knocking off the big school mm -hmm. and you had those good teams and made me the excitement a little bit more. But it's been so long since we've had glass basketball, you can't remember what <laughs> That's true. what all those things you know felt like back in the days. And the kids now have no clue what single class basketball or single class softball or baseball right. looks like. So was it in the '80s when uh, I want to say it's been around '86, '87, '88, somewhere yes, in there. But, I thought so too. But uh, you know, so you're talking almost 30 years right. plus, well 30 years plus right. that we've been in class basketball so <laughs> or class baseball or whatever class you want to sure. get to so but football's kind of been clustered in times and different but not class but they used to have little clusters way, way back in the day and you competed in your cluster to get in the tournament so <laughs> but things change things change that's what keeps the world going around i asked him a couple years ago i mean with with how things are right now well, there'll be co-ed teams coming down the line instead of single gender teams. Well, we have co-ed teams. Yes. I can see that happening, but I don't know that it will, but I could see it happening. Can you? Just, you know, just the way things in the world have changed and mm -hmm. with all the other situations out there, I could see that possibly being a possibility somewhere down the line. So you mean uh, boys and girls? Be competing on the same team. You just have a co-ed basketball team or a co-ed baseball team or whatever. That's interesting. So, so, I don't know if it'll happen, but I could see it possible. It's possible. I huh? see it possible. <laughs> Anything is possible. So you don't know. So, <laughs> when you were growing up, do uh, you have a coach that you remember very well that helped you a great deal and in, in steering no, you the right way? I can't say I really had any that were terrible, but I'd say my eighth grade one of my eighth grade coaches, Jerry Winger, was he was good. Uh, talked about. He would happen to be a basketball coach and just, you know, just instilled the thought of how you should play. And mm -hmm. for his big saying was, if you guard your guy and they don't score and all five of you think like that, then they can't beat you because nobody's going to score. So, you know, maybe that's why defense was always important to me. And Was that in high school? Oh, or? that was in eighth grade. And then okay. a uh, guy named Frank O'Shea was my football coach in high school. And Frank went on to coach at Merrillville and his boys are at Lafayette Central Catholic and a bit yes. of Delta and Kevin and Tim and... Just a great guy. I don't. I can't think that I've had any that I just thought were just downright terrible. And uh, <laughs> sure. track coach in high school was good, and he went on to be a professor at Butler. And so, great experiences. And of course, you know, I'll go back younger. My dad was probably the never coached me, but just talking about sports. And I always remember he said, if they ask you if you can pitch when you're a nine year old, you tell them yes, and they'll put you on the mound and they'll let you know if you can, you can't, but you don't ever tell them no. So. <laughs> You know, for me, that kind of stuck with myself and my two sisters, and you know, that's just how we kind of learned to compete, that there wasn't anything that was off limits. It was just as hard as you can go and everything you got all the time. Sure. What makes a good coach? Well, I think it's changed. I mean, I, I can remember being screamed at and hollered at and probably called everything under the sun a few times. <laughs> and I, don't, I think now, I think so many kids are looking for that person that you know male female whatever that they can mm -hmm. relate to and make a connection with somehow and I think as coaches you talk to them a lot about you know do you really know your kids outside just being a player you yes know, what kind of connection have you made because you know outside the two hours you have and they got 24 you know two other hours are just a person and what's their what's their hobbies what are they into what are they like and I think a lot of kids like that if you know a little bit about them outside just the the support that you have and so just making those personal connections with people and setting the groundwork and setting the rules and holding them accountable, which has been a hard thing for a lot of people is to hold people accountable anymore. Cause <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do in life, you got, you're going to be accountable as you come down the line. So, Yeah, times have changed. Uh, Greatly. Not for the better. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever know if it's good or bad, but it's definitely a different change and different mindsets from lots of people in different areas. So. Well, that's interesting that you think we may see some co-ed sports one of these days. I mean, we, we have... Well, I know. You, you think of the way society's going with gender and... Yes. ...and all the other things that's going on. I, I could see it being a possibility as we come down the line, but I'm not saying it's going to, but... Right. They asked me about three years ago what I thought one of the biggest things coming, and that was what I told them three years ago, and think of how many things have changed in the last three years about transgendering and... Mm -hmm. guys and girls on each team and unisex bathrooms and you just you sure. I'm not saying it's bad I but I, I could see that coming well, down the line so yes. 
But that would be unusual, wouldn't it, to have? It'd be a little different. It'd be something unique and different. <laughs> I don't know what it would look like and how it would look. But, you know, I've seen, you know, we've had girls play football. We've had some girls wrestle. Mm -hmm. um, other teams have had, I've seen girls on the boys' soccer team and et cetera. So right now it's, it's not written that boys cannot play on girls' teams yes. at all. And, uh, but if, the, if we don't offer a sport that the girls ha are compatible with, then they, they can play on the guys' team, so. If they make the team, if they, if they work make the hard, team, make the team. We never had a girl stick the whole football season out, but we've had at least one stick the entire wrestling four years out, so. Right. But uh, we'll see. I don't know where it's going, don't, but I can see it happening. That's interesting, but uh, maybe here before we know it. <laughs> Might be after our times, but. <laughs> But you never know where things are going to lead to. So, what, What's the outlook for the Spartans in the winter sports, in your opinion? Uh, well, I think we're all going in with the idea that things are going to be well. You know, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of kids, we still need some numbers in swimming. You know, to be successful in swimming, we've got to have numbers. And same thing with wrestling. You know, you have a new coach in Colton Gonzalez. And yes. We'll have some new assistants with him. And then it's another sport where you have to have, you got to have numbers because you got to fill your weight right. classes. And if you don't fill your weight classes... It's hard to win and other than just being an individual advancing in the tournament itself. But, you know, with, with boys basketball and, and girls basketball and gymnastics, it's just a matter of how much time has the kids put in during the mm -hmm. season. And as being a parent of an ex-gymnast, you can't be just a seasonal gymnast because your body ch changes so much and your strength goes away. And if you don't practice all those things since you've been out last February and you're going to come back in November, you're probably not going to be as talented as you were when you walked out in February because you didn't put the time in to to doing things the way you need to do them just because of the changes in your body that's going to take shape and place, especially when you're young and still growing. So I know mine did it all the time, and she grew 14 inches at 18 months, and I didn't think she had any coordination for six months, but she couldn't keep up with her growth. So those things come into play when you're still an adolescent and you're growing, and especially in gymnastics and other sports like that, that you've got to use your body to move around with. So yes. The gymnastics team has how many Members usually. Last year we had about 13 to 16. I don't remember exactly which one it was, mm -hmm. but we've always seemed to have a good number of gymnastics. But uh, you really only have to have about four to have a really good team because they're only going to take the top three scores at the sectional. So if you can get four, or in case somebody's get hurt, you can have a good team. And, yes. Uh, you know, that's been proven other things. Seton Catholic won the track sectional with seven girls a few years back, but they were seven pretty good <laughs> girls and they were all in the right sports <laughs> the events. So. But, you know, Coach Borders has been the gymnastics coach for, uh, I don't know. I know. Forty-some years, it seems Something like. like and, that, uh, yes. Were there the big boys gymnastics, you think? Uh, they used to have it a long time ago, but I don't see it coming back. Because if you okay. had the boys gymnasts, then you got to find another sport to add in for girls. So, but I can see girls wrestling coming as an individual sport. Right, we've seen. So. Cottonville has had some right. lady and wrestlers. There's a, two or three schools that have not all a full team of girl wrestlers, but they still they have their individual Indiana State Wrestling Association puts on a girl state finals for them, and we've had a couple of girls compete in it. And, uh, but I can see it coming in as a possible sport in the near future. A lot of changes may be right around the corner. Just Well, all the sports we've had are all the old traditional sports that have always been, so there's always new sports coming out. So That's right. I just say as an emerging sport plan and, you know, boys volleyball is getting big in certain spots. So to get the right amount of people around the state, they could push to push boys volleyball through or girls wrestling or as uh, we talked many times before, bowling's got enough teams already, but yes. it's getting all the bowling people to jump in with the rules that they have to follow during season. And that's the hard time for them because the winter's their best season as mm -hmm. a bowling proprietor because everybody's inside in sure. the winter time. And, Winter sports so. right around the corner. Brent, as always, thanks for joining us uh, to bring us up to date on, on some things and some very interesting topics. And we always appreciate you stopping by and talking. Well, I'm happy to be here. You know, it's great to come out and watch our kids play. So if you haven't come and seen them, come out in the wintertime and, and cheer them on. They'd be happy to have everybody. Thanks, Brent. Brent Duncan joins us here on this edition of the Spartan Sports Report. Thanks, everybody, for watching.